Several names may come into focus with the observance of the first Mashamani celebrations, but Jim Blackman, Hernan Nobriga, and Jimmy Hamilton will always stand out. Indeed, the names of these three should be ingrained in our nation's history for the carnival-type observances of the Republic anniversary on February 23 each year. Mashramani has its roots in the town known as Linden today. Following independence in 1966, the JCs of Linden, an organization with a mandate to promote community development, came up with the idea of an independent celebration in the town of Mackenzie. The main attraction being the crowning of an independence queen. As the event grew in popularity, it graduated from an independence queen to an independence carnival, which saw new features and participants. The first such event was held in 1969. Okay, and it's become independent in 66. Mackenzie had to do something. The GSTs came in at that time. And they did everything. We had a number of functions, but we started the Independence Queen Contest with a difference. And the difference is that you were not parading like you do in what you have these days, uh, uh, play wear and uh, evening wear and that type of thing. Um, the contestants were selected by companies and departments of the company. And as such, uh, we promoted them. In 1968, we, we changed, and it was suggested that we do a carnival. So we have Independence Carnival in 68, and we did everything, copy it from Trinidad. We had a carnival crane, we had a Calypso contest, but Olmas, Juve, you name it. In 1970, with Guyana gearing for Republican status, a committee comprising national folklorist Wordsworth MacAndrew, acclaimed Guyanese poet A.J. Seymour, and famed mountaineer Adrian Thompson, decided to change the event into a national celebration involving participation from across the country. The first priority was to find a suitable name to replace the word carnival. After exhausting all avenues of research and with time running out, the organizers sought the help of Alan Fitgau, an Amerindian who worked in the geographical department of the Bauxite Company. Following discussions with Mr. Fitgau, the organizers were told of an Amerindian cultural festivity called Mashrumani, which was a celebration that usually ran for days during a wedding or after the end of hard labor. It was then decided that the Republic celebration was to be called Mashramani, meaning celebration after hard work. The first celebration indeed took the Bauxite community by storm. From every nook and cranny, they came pouring into the Mackenzie Township. The people of Kakwani, Aituni and Everton joined their colleagues as they sought to occupy common ground for the series of nationalization events to follow. It was master many to celebrate um, after a successful uh, gathering for a, a particular project, a successful project, but it is harvesting or what. And the word you said that is used um, is in English, they don't know. it's an Arabic word and it's not a certain thing, but it sounds like mashramani. But there's no Arabic dictionary and we don't have the thing. So we say, hi, this sounds ideal. We are a cooperative republic. And this and self-help at the time was being peddled by the government. This is the ideal situation. The Mackenzie Bacchanal was Trinidad-like in its outlook. For one thing, the term Shanto was subsidized instead of Calypso as it's known in Trinidad. The Mackenzie JCs also decided to use four-day mourning instead of juve, as in Trinidad. In 1970, when we were now going to become a republic, and um, one of the, uh, the president of the day, in the public statement, said that, uh, comrades, we are now going to be a republic. That was the trigger that started Mashramani. Because we had to know, and because um, Republican status brought us forward from May to February, it means we had a shorter time now to, to plan. And we did the first thing by Guyanizing the uh, celebration. We no longer had 
a juve or all mass, we had a four-day morning jumbo, which was not unusual in Guyana in that people did this every New Year's morning. When they left uh, <laughs> all this night ball, they go in the streets to be called four-day morning jumbo. More than a thousand revelers who made up the band of the first mash exceeded the projected number within weeks of launching the program. The buses coming to and fro could be heard all hours at night into the wee hours of the morning as the people from the Buckside communities wended their way to Mackenzie, all in the mood to celebrate the first mash in Guyana. Meanwhile, in Georgetown, a candlelight march, a joint service parade and masquerade bands as well as fireworks highlighted the observances in the capital. One year later, writing in the foreword of the souvenir brochure of the JCs of Mackenzie, President Forbes Burnham acknowledged, quote, that the people of Wisma, Mackenzie and Christianburg had provided the title for the national celebrations, Mash Romani, end quote. Burnham wrote, I congratulate the community of Mackenzie, Wisma and Christianburg not only for having presented one of the most comprehensive programs for the first anniversary celebrations, but also for having provided the title for the celebrations, Mash Romani. After Guyana gained Republican status, Mash Romani was taken to Georgetown for the first time in 1972, following the then government's call for it to travel to other parts of the country in keeping with the nationalistic principles. Each year, the Mash Romani Organizing Committee begins planning for the celebration in August, September of the year prior to the event. Adverts are placed in the public domain, encouraging persons to join in the selection of the MASH theme. February is the month of MASH Romani and it's usually a hive of activities. One of the key activities is the Calypso competition. This event has been a huge success over the years, usually attracting quite a large number of contestants whose pieces feature social commentary. Competition has always been keen and has become sophisticated with time. Most singers are now accompanied on stage by dancers and other related ensembles to match their theme. When in crisis, venting out their frustration, they are chosen vessels to mold the young generation. Men in crisis, because we allow them to fail. Women and girls succeeding, but we lack in the men in jail. Some very famous names who have graced the stages in these contests are the Mighty Chief, Lady Guymine, Tempest and Mighty Rebel and Bill Rogers. There is also the Junior Calypso competition. The Soka Monarch is an extension of the traditional Calypso. This genre has established some well-known artists on the local stage, with Vanilla, Big Red, Adrian Dutchin and Quasi Ace among the popular names. The very popular Chutney competition is another addition to the cultural calendar of Mashramani celebrations. <laughs> This particular competition is keenly contested by both male and female artists and attracts very large crowds, especially in the rural areas where they are held. The children's costume and float parade bands have grown into a well-organized competition among participating schools, drawn from the nursery, primary and secondary levels. This culminates in a grand parade through the city streets and into the national park. Before. She really wishes she wanted some more. She tell me if 
segments of the children's involvement in the celebration include dramatic poetry and physical display, 
The steel band competition has also been making its presence felt. Over the last weekend, we held the uh, Calypso semi-final in Latem Region 9, and that was a huge success. The Soko Monarch semi-final in Linden Region 10, and that too had a huge turnout, and it was a really great show. And the Chutney semi-final in Bartika Region 7, um, it's an excellent show, however, um, the weather really affected the kind of turnout that we were looking for. Uh, but we were happy with the quality of music that would have been presented. Held in the categories of soloist, pan duet, school band and small band, this competition has seen very high performance standards and has attracted very good corporate sponsorship. We've had a number of uh, corporate entities uh, coming on board so far to support MASH, um, Republic Bank, they would have pledged their continued support to the steel band competition and other steel band activities. Bank ZIH to the Calypso competition. And they've been uh, interest expressed by a number of other companies uh, seeing ways which they could get involved in Mashramani 2018. The most significant representation of the Mashramani celebration, however, is the float and costume parade. <laughs> Grand National Extravaganza has been the main attraction on the card for the thousands of Guyanese who line the parade route. Preparation begins with the mash camps in early January and gathers momentum as the various costume designers and their assistants work feverishly to prepare outfits for the various bands. On Manj Day, the biggest celebration usually takes place in or around Guyana's capital, Georgetown where these now spectacular costumes, competitions, float parades, masquerade bands are accompanied by dancing in the streets to steel pan and calypso music. Major private companies such as GTT, Banks DIH, Ansem McCall and Digicel have, over the years, joined in the sponsorship of participation in Mashramani, making it bigger and better. The corporate entities have sponsored large costume bands, adding color and excitement to the celebration. Now coming under the helm of the Department of Culture, Youth and Sport in the Ministry of Social Cohesion, this year under the theme, Let's Cooperate and Celebrate Republic 48, for the first time national MASH events were taken countrywide. Other activities include community cleanup campaigns, regional concerts, school debating competitions, lecture series and essay writing competitions and memorial services. As the years have progressed since gaining Republican status, more Guyanese and visitors of all races have joined in the festivities. Just before Guyanese take to the streets in their numbers, some to gyrate and flounce behind the floats and others to line the roadways to watch the colorful spectacle, InfoHub took its mics to the streets of Georgetown to get their thoughts on the national celebration and some insight into how they will be spending MASH Day. Gearing up for Mashramani celebrations, a few persons voiced their opinions and expectations for the event. I feel Mash is a good way for guys to relieve stress. Yeah, I expect a lot. I, I see a lot of celebration, a lot of joy. You know, just and and the community coming together. My expectation in Mash that it can be much more better than last year because the change in road. So I expect it to be much more funnable this year. I feel happy about the Mash. Um, why I'm feeling happy? Things coming my way. I'll be taking my children out for the marsh, and along with that, my son here, Tyrone Edwards, he's taking part in his school marsh competition. That's why I'm happy. Some persons gave us insight into how they plan to spend the day. We want to go out and enjoy, have fun, go with family and friends, you know, have fun and make sure it's uh, a nice, um, nice place to hang out, you know what I mean? That's what we're looking for. We don't want no violence, we don't want no problem, we don't want no blood running. We, we just want peace. We want uh, everybody to come out and enjoy themselves, you know what I mean? Be like a family. We want, even though I don't know you, you don't know me, but we want the connection to be together and everybody enjoy the mushroom Plans for mushroom for me is to spend it with relatives then. We'll take the little children out with our own vehicle and find a good place where we can spend the day together, have fun, eat, laughter and enjoy the floats. Most persons feel that after the fun and frolic is over, the cleanup process should begin immediately. Yes, the only thing is that um, I think they need to keep Orvin Street more cl clean at all time instead of waiting until mash comes around then for clean it. You understand? I think it needs to be a, a, around the clock, keeping it clean.
clean. I expect the community to come together, right? I see right now there's certain areas being cleaned up by the public works. It'll be nice after MASH, you know, everybody got to recuperate, you know, for a couple of, a day maybe. But after that, we should all come together and try to clean up our place because we live in this community together, you know? And I don't like seeing trash anywhere. It just makes Guyana look not good. Mashramani has undoubtedly become the biggest cultural extravaganza of a national character. It is an event that is looked forward to by Guyanese from all walks of life. It is perhaps the only festival that transcends religious and ethnic boundaries and is embraced by peoples of every color and creed. It is getting bigger and better every year, bringing out in the process the creativity and ingenuity of the Guyanese people, especially in the cultural domain. A happy Mashramani to all Guyanese, including those living abroad, more particularly those who come home from abroad to share this glorious moment with us. We now leave you with some scenes from some of the MASH activities over the past week. Several names may come into focus with the observance of the first MASH Romani celebrations, but Jim Blackman, Hernan Nobriga, and Jimmy Hamilton will always stand out. Indeed, the names of these three should be ingrained in our nation's history for the carnival-type observances of the Republic anniversary on February 23 each year. MASH Romani has its roots in the town known as Linden today. Following independence in 1966, the JCs of Linden, an organization with a mandate to promote community development, came up with the idea of an independent celebration in the town of Mackenzie. The main attraction being the crowning of an independence queen. As the event grew in popularity, it graduated from an independence queen to an independence carnival, which saw new features and participants. The first such event was held in 1969. Okay, it's going to become independent in 66. Mackenzie had to do something. The GSTs came in at that time. And they did everything. We had a number of functions, but we started the Independence Queen Contest with a difference. And the difference is that you were not parading like you do in what you have these days. Uh, uh, play wear and uh, evening wear and that type of thing. Um, the contestants were selected by companies and departments of the company. And as such, uh, we promoted them. In 1968, we, we changed. And it was suggested that we do a carnival. So we have Independence Carnival in 68. And we did everything, copy it from Trinidad. We had a carnival crane, we had a calypso contest, but all mass, juve, you name it. In 1970, with Guyana gearing for Republican status, a committee comprising national folklorist Wordsworth MacAndrew, acclaimed Guyanese poet A.J. Seymour, and famed mountaineer Adrian Thompson, decided to change the event into a national celebration involving participation from across the country. The first priority was to find a suitable name to replace the word carnival. After exhausting all avenues of research and with time running out, the organizers sought the help of Alan Fitgau, an Amerindian who worked in the geographical department of the Bauxite Company. Following discussions with Mr. Fitku, the organizers were told of an Amerindian cultural festivity called Mashrumani, which was a celebration that usually ran for days during a wedding or after the end of hard labor. It was then decided that the Republic celebration was to be called Mashramani, meaning celebration after hard work. The first celebration indeed took the Bauxite community by storm. From every nook and cranny, they came pouring into the Mackenzie.